This is one of those videos that I'm really not sure I want to tackle, but we're going to try because my Tungsten Torque Bar Mini, it's got a um, one of the full ceramic bearings in there and it's gotten dirty. I don't know if you can hear it on camera. Maybe see that slowing down pretty quick. Not normal for that bearing. And it just sounds um, gritty. And it still works okay, but it can be better. And I've uh, I got I got options, so we're gonna we're gonna try this. So changing R188 bearings. It's really not that hard, especially when you have the right tools. This button likes to get stuck. I think I have to. Thread this one on a little. These fine threads on the torque bar buttons, just gotta be careful with them. I'm being ridiculously gentle. There we go. So the first thing I can do is maybe just try to, no, I'm not gonna clean it. I'm just gonna take it out because I want to try another bearing in here. I stopped carrying this spinner even before the um, the bearing got dirty because uh, well, I started carrying this guy because these buttons fit. And I really like how this thing sounds with, honestly, it's got the exact same bearing. So this would be kind of cool to show. Oh, that grub screw came loose on me again. I just need to get the right Allen wrench. <laughs> Gonna do that on video too. But we'll have to go off camera to go grab a uh, Imperial Allen wrench set. I've only got metric sitting here on the bench with me. Man, what a struggle. Like, what? what's happening here? Here we go. So yeah, same bearing, but I guess you all heard a second ago, they sound entirely different. Um, the stainless steel and uh, it's really just the stainless steel, the buttons change it a little, but the stainless steel is much louder with the higher pitched tone and the stainless just, or this tungsten just eats up all the noise. You know, it comes out with like a bit of a whir sound. All right. I don't have to tighten that on camera. I'm just gonna put it back together and enjoy it. I really have been EDCing this a lot. Look at the, the form on the leather. <laughs> you can literally see the button. Perfect slip. Made by Jake Coy on Facebook. All right, so I've got two bearing tools. This is the really cheap one from eBay. And I had to make this part for it because the one that it originally came with, I don't even think I have it in here anymore. Um, I had a brass insert. So when you would run it up and down the threads, you would find little brass chips. Um, that's definitely no good. And the threads also weren't perpendicular to the uh, pressing surface. So I, uh, I fixed that too. And then I just ended up getting one of the cap ones. Um, I honestly use a combination of both. I find that some spinners don't work as good in the cap one and vice versa. So um, yeah, let's see. Use the cap parts here to press it out. So like for example here, the cap bearing tool, it didn't come with these washers and bearing race. Um, it just takes off some of the radial load on the, um, the part that actually pushes the bearing out. Whoa. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's because the torque bar mini is so small. All right, so that's got to be with. See, this is why I have two tools. Maybe I can do it on this one. This is coming down to not having enough thread engagement. Yeah, this one's got a longer. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing, huh? All right. 
so that's all stacked up it's a good idea just to cinch it down look it over make sure everything is lined up properly before you actually torque it to press the bearing out I don't know if you noticed how easy that was uh, let's see I've had that bearing in there for I mean easily three four months and um, you know I ripped pretty hard doing the spins this is what I use, and it hasn't come loose. Inside of this is not too dirty. I'm actually missing a tool here that I usually use. I usually have a little um, razor blade scraper. It fits in here really good, but um, this will work for today. Especially since this is a tungsten, it's really easy to use a steel blade and scrape out any of the excess Loctite that's left behind. Definitely want to do that. It can mess up how, um, what word do I want to use? It can mess up how centered the bearing goes in. You can make it go in slightly crooked if there's, you know, a film of Loctite just on one side. So it's best to have a totally clean surface and apply the Loctite or I guess glue if you're using it evenly all the way around. Cause it, uh, in my experience, it can, totally skew it by, you know, even a fraction of a thousandth of an inch, but that's still enough to um, make something perfectly balanced, not spin perfectly balanced anymore. I don't know if you can see all the Loctite starting to stick. That's the stuff you don't want in there. That'll absolutely dirty up a fresh bearing or even your old bearing move that out of the way I think that's what's happened to some of these bearings over here like the unquiet hands moon and Milky Way those are some awesome bearings some of the first full ceramics that I got but um I either got Loctite in them or something some kind of dust and it maybe either caused damage or I literally just can't get them clean but they do not spin like new anymore there's Definitely some of that gravelly noise and it. It just sounds like there's dust particles or something inside the bearing and it didn't used to sound like that. So I, uh, I don't run those anymore. All right, that's pretty good. So now deciding what bearing to use whenever you have basically every option under the sun. Um, and these are all from Unquiet Hands. I have the Nibiru in the uh, Zirconium Torque Bar Mini. It's a pretty silent bearing with very tight tolerances. It's a very fast bearing, long spin times. But I think in the tungsten, it's going to be almost lifeless. So that's why I went with the, the ceramic, which I'm going to put over here now. I'll label it later. Probably forget now. Let's go ahead and label it. I like to know what it was in and, or what it was in previously. So I know it's not a new bearing. Yep, high tech. All right, so yeah. Nibiru is probably a no-go. The Deep Space is a shielded bearing that I've usually found very quiet, so I'm probably also not going to run that. Reptilian is another hybrid ceramic. All those are hybrid ceramics, by the way. Reptilian, nah, nah. It's just kind of a middle-of-the-road bearing. It's kind of, it's not really quiet. It's not really loud. It just kind of, it does everything okay. Um... Do you like tighter tolerances? Maybe we should run one of these. These are the, these are like really, really awesome ABEX 7 bearings. This is what Scott McCoskery, McCoskery, Jesus Christ. Um, it's what he runs in a lot of the torque bars whenever you buy directly from him. Super, super high in bearing. Um, I will say that when they get dirty, do I have one? here I think yeah 
don't know. Oh, there's so many bearings. I know it's labeled. Doesn't matter, I guess. There we go. These guys. Once they get dirty, to me, they never seem the same again. There's just some bearings that are like that. Some will clean up okay, like these uh, full ceramics. I have great luck with being able to clean them up, despite... Well, this one cleaned up okay. It just got dirty again quickly. So yeah, the full ceramics really do clean okay, uh, especially the silicone nitride ones. But I gotta say, that maybe it's just because the tolerance are super, tolerances are super tight on these. Um, these three, this one actually came in my stainless torque bar mini that's in the leather slip. This one came in the zirconium torque bar mini when I got it. And then this one came in the tungsten torque bar mini. And they're all, they were all awesome literally until they got dusty, dirty, gritty, and I, I couldn't get them clean, so they weren't as enjoyable to use anymore. Spin times were down, spin quality it wasn't as good. There was a little bit of a, yeah, just like a roughness. Very, very minor, but still not as good as when they're new. So I think, I think I'm gonna go back to one of those, give that a shot. Because I mean, they're really, really awesome bearings. They have tight tolerances and they just, they have, make a really cool whirr sound. I gotta remember how to do this on a torque bar mini. Let's do this, think this through before I think this is the one that I press up against because this one, yep, it's not fit right. I'm gonna use the cap tool because usually I like to, it's just, it's a little bit nicer all around. Even though the, uh, that bolt is exactly the same. So you're paying for just the machined bit of titanium. Ah, well, they do have different stamping, so I can't say they're exactly the same. <laughs> but same thread pitch, same style bolt. <laughs> I even had to turn this one on the lathe right here to get a little more uh, clearance on one of the spinners before I got this tool. Just crazy stuff. All right, on to Loctite, I guess. So again, this is the Harbor Freight Medium Strength, number 42, the blue. And um, what I like to do, why is that dripping already? Go ahead and put that on the inside of the race and on the other side. Maybe you can see that. Put it a drop there and a drop there. Then I'm gonna use a knife pivot lube, ultra micro like swab thingy. These things are a little, uh, <laughs> uh, they work really good, but they can, the little tip can just fall off some of them and the size of the tips are they vary a lot i don't know if you can see that like some have a really small pad it's the ones with the small pad that really come off i guess there's just less fiber or whatever to adhere to the plastic tip so just something to i think that should be noted about these things all i'm doing is applying an even film all the way around I like the these little microfiber swabs for this because it um it aids in getting a very even application. All right, I'm gonna rest that on here. Go ahead and grab a bearing. Um, a lot of these are just they're just a slip fit, so the tool honestly is only necessary to remove the bearing. And then it helps to, um, see, it just slipped together. But a reason it's a good idea to still use the tool is because you can just snug it up and then it's going to hold everything square and flush because this bottom plate is against the body. The top one is against the bearing. And so it's sandwiching it all together and it should be, uh, you know, flat and perpendicular. So I'm gonna leave it here for a few minutes because this stuff has to cure. It's usually workable in, you know, five to 10 minutes. I've found within that five minute range, maybe even up to 15 minutes, if you're really, like really going hard on a spinner, you can push the bearing through and it'll break it loose. But um, if you especially wait overnight, um, it's it's gonna be good. Should be fine for the duration of <laughs> how long you want the bearing in there until your next change. So I guess there's nothing else to do until that dries, 
Should I talk about bearings? Should I do another change? Like, yeah, this one's the Nibiru. It's fine. It's not dirty. It doesn't need cleaning. It hasn't even got dirty on me, and I've carried it a good bit. I've also got the Nibiru in here. This is a Mackie Captain. It's a hybrid ceramic. Kind of quiet. Really long spin times. I honestly think of all my spinners, um, there's not a ton in here. There we go. This was probably my longest spinning one, even though it's just a Zerk and stainless. Um, these are tungsten. It's, um, I think it's the design and the bearing itself. Oh, this thing just spins for freaking ever. This one, I have a Cat B. So this is a uh, all white ceramic bearing. It looks similar to those. It's a little looser bearing than the, um, the silicone nitride, the black ones. But it, this is a press fit spinner. And I found that the bearings with tighter tolerances got too tight whenever they were pressed into this body. So the looser bearing, like the Cat B, tightens up a little bit in here, but it's still very free. A lovely sound, good feedback. This one does seem maybe a little dirty. Yeah, I can feel a little gritting going on in there. So I guess let's, I'm going to clean that. This will be semi on camera. How I like to clean bearings. Can't blast it with alcohol here. So that's why I got to go off camera. Um, but I use a, um, an actual sprayer with 99%, put it on the jet stream and literally just blast it right here, like spin it And I do both sides, maybe do it a couple times. And then I will put one of the buttons on top and from the bottom, you're going to be hearing this. I'll turn a hairdryer on and spin this and blow hot air through it. And this 99% evaporates really, really quickly. So spin it dry and should be good as new. So let's see. Oh, why is this stuck? There we go. I'll uh, turn around and do this real quick. Oh, helps if it's on the jet stream. Give it a flip. Sorry for that squeak. And then I'm gonna put the button on and blast it with a hairdryer from underneath. And that's how I know it's all dry because it's still spinning from whenever I was blowing the hot air through it. Much longer spin times on just the button now. Um, that's a good way to tell how your spinners are doing. There's a lot less weight and inertia in the button. So if you spin it by the button and it comes to a quick stop, you can almost bet you've got some dirt or something in your bearing. Now, yeah, that's much better. That's how I like this one to feel. There's still pretty good feedback through the buttons, especially whenever you're rotating it and moving it around. Vertically, not so much. Horizontal, you get some of that same feedback. Such an awesome spinner. All right, big brother to the Axis Micro Mini. <laughs> Axis Micro. This one's got a retention system and I've got one of the silicone nitride bearings in it. And it's a, um, Awesome, awesome sound. This is exactly the bearing for this spinner, in my opinion. Because there's so much mass in the center of this thing. Um, if you look under the buttons here, I mean, it's just a bunch of tungsten. Uh, this one's a, what's it called? Retention system? I don't remember. It uses a tool. It's got four prongs. This unscrews and then the bearing just falls in and out. There is no, there is no need for glue or pressing or anything. <laughs> It's literally just a slip fit. So it's really nice for being able to swap bearings, try bearings out. That's actually why I have this spinner. So I can evaluate bearings very easily before 
I put them in one of my scepters, which is much more difficult to swap bearings on. <laughs> so yeah, that's the original reason I got this and kind of got hooked on spinners and bearings. So again, the tungsten eats up a lot of the sound and feedback, uh, the haptic feedback, not haptic, but you know, the tactile feedback that you get from a spinner in the bearing, especially with a high feedback bearing. So having a bearing with a lot of feedback and a really heavy body spinner like this, I really think it's just a great combination. Same thing goes for this, same bearing, full tungsten, Zerk buttons. This one uses um, the Loctite or glue to hold the bearing into. And man, it's just, this is one of my favorite spinners. I really wanna find some superconductor buttons for it. I'd like to make some, but it honestly is just cheaper for me to buy them. Superconductors are so expensive. And then it would take me all the time to make them and yeah. So tungsten spinners with full ceramic bearings are pretty dang sweet. Some of the bearings are pretty cool um, that are hybrid ceramics and tungsten, but I find that to be only select few. Um, in general, hybrid ceramics have less feedback than full ceramics. So when you add all the weight and mass of tungsten, it's gonna eat up all that. So you need the extra to you know compensate for it. I guess it's not to say that silent bearings in these big heavy tungsten spinners are also pretty cool because they are so quiet. I mean, there's like no noise that comes out of them. It can almost be, you know, quieter than this even. It actually is quieter than this whenever you're making it judder. Um, I had that, again, that Nibiru 2.0 bearing in this spinner for a while. And it was really great because, God, it just spun for... I bet it would spin for probably eight or nine minutes just on a single rip and either holding like this or this, you know, not moving it around. And it was just dead silent, but it would fight you so hard and not slow down whenever you're, you know, doing stuff like this and moving it around. You know, this causes the most resistance on a bearing. And with the Nibiru 2.0, these guys, and looks really similar to, it's actually these right here. They're just really fast bearings, but they're very quiet. So I think maybe a lot of people might like that actually. Got some one drop hiding over here. Um, it's supposed to be legendary. I came to the game late and I gotta say, I got 15 of them in a batch for my scepters. And it was like every one in a pack was different. They're tighter or looser tolerances. Some would be smooth, some would be kind of rough feeling some actually didn't even spin like true they would make every spinner or scepter head wobble so um they're not being made anymore that's i think i'm okay with that if you got some of the old good ones i mean they were cool i had maybe three of the 15 that i had that were uh you know they lived up to the hype of one drop so let's see we're 23 has it been long enough to take that torque bar out it's kind of what i'm trying to sit here and stall and do i think so let's do it and if not i can look at the timestamp and see that that was not enough time you see the using this guy and putting a really small film this is the side that was down that we pushed the bearing into and there's not even any residual loctite um, yeah, just works out really good. All right, my buttons. This particular button has a little more color than the other one. So my OCD, I always put it on the scam stamped side. <laughs> I think that just pushed the bearing out. Yep. All right. That was not anywhere close to long enough. What a pain in the dick. What was that? Weird. So, put this back on. That's something I've kind of found with the torque bars. Um, they 
maybe the tolerances aren't quite as tight as some of the other spinners. Like, you know, I was able to just press it right in. Um, so I've maybe a little, not concerned, but I just think the tolerances are a little looser, so it actually makes the Loctite set up slower. Um, Loctite sets up in the absence of oxygen. So if there's, you know, not a perfectly tight seal, so to say, that it's going to, I mean, it's gonna cure slower, at least than how my brain's logic works. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and stall again. This <laughs> hopefully dry. It could take a little bit. So raving about this. Maybe a little slow for some spinners, but I still love it. It's still my preferred method. Easy cleanup, and it sets up pretty quickly. I'm not changing bearings that much anymore nowadays. Favorite spinners, press fit, retention, and I have no desire to ever change the bearing in this. This particular full ceramic is just a really nice one. love it absolutely love it once i get some superconductor buttons this is probably going to be my top spinner gonna cut it here this is bearings i didn't even show all these these are all full ceramics too the silicone nitrides i had this bag was pretty much full put them in scepters and had some break put some in friend spinners yeah bearings man lots of lots of bearings lots of lots of time and research and development it's not just for the hobby i really like testing different ones for the for scepters this is a um fz essentials um hc4 hybrid ceramic lovely lovely bearing some of you may have seen this in melanie's video or some of my old ones the bearing was dirty when I sent it to Melanie. So that was that was kind of bad. Didn't sound very good in the video. Spins forever. Lovely sound with the tungsten head and the zirconium handle. See ya.